Google influenced the nation with their creative bakes. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Previously on the Tastemaster SA, after the first six of the 12 contestants competed to create the ultimate fruit-inspired cake, the remaining six had to win the judges over with a spicy creation. With the top three contestants from each challenge progressing to the next round, this week in the first elimination challenge, the bottom six compete to stay in the competition in an Instagrammable challenge. Bottom six, scary one. I'm nervous. I see three new faces in the kitchen and I'm wondering what their skill level is. I wonder how they do under pressure. I think it's gonna be a great challenge today. Today is a big day for all of you. Welcome to our very first elimination challenge. The six of you found yourselves at the bottom of the first two challenges, but today is your chance at redemption. There are only four spots left in the top 10. So today will be a double elimination. That's right. The two bottom performing contestants will be going home. Two people going home in one challenge just makes this so much more tough. That's a third of the contestants today, so um, that makes me feel pretty nervous. For today's challenge, you're going to need one of the most important tools of the modern world. If you want to be taken seriously for your delicious treats, you need to be able to capture the perfect image for social media. Once your bake is complete, you will then be required to set up a scene and capture an image. You will need to do this all in four hours. We will be looking for that wow factor. When I'm scrolling through my Instagram, your image must pop off the screen and grab my attention. Don't think it's only about the photo because afterwards we'll be tasting your creations. So think about those flavors, guys. I'm looking at the Samsung Frame TV. Images are so crisp and clear. I know exactly who took those photos. I follow them on Instagram and they make amazing cakes. You will have noticed on the screen some beautiful images. These were all taken by today's guest judge and owner of one of South Africa's most popular online bakeries. Sharing a masterclass with the contestants this week is owner and creative director of Sweet Lionheart, Nikki Simmons. Known for their quirky and elaborate celebration bakes, Nikki and her team are at the cutting edge of on-trend cake design. Reaching an online audience of more than 100,000 followers, their eye-catching photos are designed to stop the browser in their tracks. All thanks to Nikki's experience as a photographer and creative director. I'm excited to see how the contestants really work with colour and form, but also just taking the very basic ingredients and seeing what they come up with creatively. Sweet Lion Heart has beautiful cakes here in beautiful shots, so professional, so neat, so clear. Hi everyone, welcome to the Instagrammable Bakes Masterclass with me, Nikki and Natalie Pinto, my right-hand girl at Sweet Lion Heart. Hi, everyone. Today, we're going to be teaching you some insider Sweet Lion Heart tips and tricks on how to create a social media-ready cake. Today, we are making our net cake, which is going to be a five-layer, 15-centimeter diameter version of our Instagram famous cake design. To stack the cake, we are going to use Swiss meringue buttercream. That icing is so smooth. I just want to get to that level of professionalism. Next up, let's talk coloring. Coloring your buttercream is almost like seasoning your food. You want to add a little bit at a time, adjust as you go. Great tip, you can always add more, but you can't take it out. Try and buy the neon colors. Don't buy a pastel shade, as you'll have to use the entire pot of food coloring to get the shade that you want. So go darker and use less. I'm going to hand this over to the frosting queen. Thank you so much. So starting from the top, with your nozzle on the side, we are going to pipe a coil motion on the top. Grabbing your offset spatula, we are going to level out the top. It's super important to make sure that your spatula is as level as possible and that you get onto eye level to make sure that your cake is nice and flat. Starting from the top, we are just going to create a coil motion going around the side of the cake. Grabbing your offset spatula, we're just going to smooth out the coils around the cake before we get onto the scraping. An offset spatula, that's my most essential tool in the kitchen. Next up, Nat's going to scrape the size of the cake using her cake scraper. These are perfect for getting a nice, smooth, tall, straight-edged cake. 
especially because we've got this little 90 degree angle. Remember to span your fingers out over the whole scraper so that when you start scraping your cake, you have an even pressure on the top as well as the bottom. I like the scraper that they have with holding on and forcing on your four fingers and adding that pressure just to smoothen the cake. It really helps the beautifying of the cake. Right, let's colour some frosting. Best way to approach it is by finding inspiration images online that you find really beautiful and matching the colours to that image. I love the way they use Pinterest to get ideas for their cakes or their pictures because that's something I always do as well. When doing a cake design like this one, it's all about symmetry, precision and having a steady hand. I really enjoy the colour scheme that Nikki uses and her assistance technique. That was great. The drapery and the piping, really good. I don't think I could ever match up to something like that. Now I'm feeling so much more intimidated. And that is our net cake design, ready to be photographed. Capturing the end result doesn't need to be overly complicated. All you need is a camera, some paper boards and beautiful natural lights. I thought she had to go into studio. She just used a piece of cardboard. For this cake, I'm going to shoot it on a pale blue background, simply because I feel like it complements the color scheme that we've gone with. What a great masterclass, getting a lot of ideas. I'm ready to bake. Remember to have fun, get creative, and we can't wait to see what you come up with. Contestants, welcome our guest judge, Nikki Simmons. Yo, this cake is amazing. I mean, the artwork, it's as if she took a needle or something and just worked it on the cake. I'm super excited to be here today, guys. I'm all about the cake life, so I'm really keen to see what you come up with and the beautiful photos that you take. Well, this cake is way too beautiful to cut into. We've got a sample version here, so let's have a taste. We're having cake. Yay! Isn't it just delicious? Fantastic. Yeah. The, the chocolate ganache with the caramel sauce, it is making my mouth tingle with beautiful flavors. Nikki, absolutely delicious. Right, you now have energy given to you by this delicious cake. You have 30 minutes to plan your bakes. Make sure that you use the time wisely. Today I'm going with a chocolate coffee Swiss roll. I definitely know it's gonna have Oreos because I love me some Oreos. I'm thinking of decorating my cake with berries. I think they will pop, they will make the picture look beautiful. When somebody is scrolling, they will say, oh wow, I think this looks delicious. I want to make something that, if this was the last dish that I could make, this is what I'd want to put forward. So if it means trying new things or doing something that's completely out of the box, that's what the day is going to be about. I'm going to do a real old school French style dessert of pears and frangipani, custard, and just hope everything comes together. I think we'll work with chocolate and beetroot, make a beetroot cake. Ready to go, ready to rock and roll. That's it, guys. Your 30 minutes are up. Let's get biking. Next up, the Instagrammable bake battle begins. Stand a chance of winning a weekly hamper from Le Creuset and be included into the draw for the grand prize of a Thermomix TM6 valued at 26,000 Rand. By creating your own bake with royal baking powder and sharing your entry on the Tastemaster SA social media platforms. Entries close midnight on 5 December 2021. For further entry details and T's and C's, visit thetastemaster.co.za. Who will influence the nation with their creative bakes? Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. Contestants, you are competing for a spot in the top 10. You have four hours to create your most Instagram-worthy bake. Once your cake is done, you'll be given the opportunity to style and capture your scene on the Samsung S21 phone. You've also got a really cool infinity curve available to you. Some nice color backdrops. Use them, don't use them. Up to you. Your time starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Get Bye. baking! The pressure's on. Last time my sponge was a little bit dense. So today I'm gonna focus on the bake and hopefully come through. Double the elimination today, double the pressure. So that means double effort. I'm feeling anxious, but I'm going to put my heart and soul into this and really just give my all. I need to redeem myself. I'm nervous. It's anyone's game. One for me. Let's bake. 
This looks like not a cake tin. <laughs> what are you making? Uh, so basically what I'm going to do is a pear and frangipani tartlet. So I'm going to set some of this lavender and blueberry compote on top of the sweet paste. And then I'm going to put that along the bottom and then a lot of French pastry cream on top. Ooh, Oreos. Yes. Can I have one? What if I don't want to? Be <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure you can. Luazi, yes. what are you doing today that's ensuring your spot in the top ten? Today I'll be making a chocolate Oreo Swiss roll. One of my favorites. Okay. Seen being Instagrammable bikes. I think I'll take the best pictures. <laughs> just like I did in the first challenge, I'm going for my Devonshire sponge. Just that this time, it's going to be perfect. I'll be starting off with my flour, my cocoa powder, mm, real baking powder as well, and my all-time favorite, buttermilk has to be in there as well. Hey, Shazia. Hi, judges. How's it going? It's going carrots. good. So I'm trying to incorporate a lot of carrots into different elements of my dish. I'm trying to make something that speaks more about my culture and that being Indian. So I'm definitely trying to incorporate something over here we call a halwa, which in South African Indian weddings you'll often see it as a starter. So that's something that I'm trying to incorporate in a desserty way. We saw some tasty wheat growing in there as yes. well. Yes, so, so that's actually like a really nice binding agent, if you can call it that, that actually gives it its texture and that full body. The process of halwa is so tedious. You have to stir and stir and stir up. My arm is going to die. Jason? Hi something guys. of the expression on your face tells me something just happened. I added the butter too early while the meringue was warm, so it kind of... Is your butter warm as it's well, room temperature? Room temperature. So pop that in the fridge, and you can also put your meringue in the fridge. You might be able to save it. And then once your butter is nice and cool, your meringue comes down to temperature as well. Put your butter inside. I'm going to get tracking on a new one. Are you making a cake or are you making a salad? I'm making a cake. <laughs> Obviously beetroot inspired. What are you using the beetroot for? Uh, the orange ones, I am going to candy them. Uh -huh. So they'll be candy, they'll be part of my garnish to make a pop of colour as well. First thing I need to do is get my red beetroots cooking. I'm going to put it in the oven, cook it in the oven. That will retain the colour instead of cooking it in water. I'll use my Thermomix to make my beetroot puree, which I'll then incorporate into my sponge. With the orange beetroot, thinly slice them, and then I'm gonna add them to my syrup. My syrup has cardamom, it has star anise, has some sugar, some water. I'm making a white chocolate mousse, so I need to melt the chocolate down. So I can start with the mousse, I really need the mousse to set. So I really have to make sure that I get this in the freezer as soon as possible. Second attempt, looking pretty good. One hour gone, you have three hours left, everybody. Woohoo! Three hours might seem like a lot of time, but it goes really quickly when you're baking a cake. Kinsani. <laughs> What's going on here? Just something that I made a mistake on, so I'm not going to use that anymore. I think the pressure is getting to me. I seem to be making a lot of mistakes in this competition. In the first challenge, I put less baking powder than I was supposed to. And in this challenge, I was supposed to cream the sugar and the eggs together. I ended up putting the eggs, the buttermilk, the oil in one jar, and I realized, oh my goodness, I made another mistake yet again. So now knowing that's not your Instagramable bike, <laughs> what is? Um, I'm working on this now. I'm actually making a red velvet cake, and I'm going to make another cake, which is another color and another flavor. And later, I'm going to make brownies as well. So I just want to get these in the oven because the cooling time is very important. I can't work on a cake that is very warm. Awesome, and are you baking three items? Yeah. Okay, and you're not worried about that being too many? I will see how it goes. I'm a bit scared about the challenge because I'm not like a food photographer. So I hope I'm going to be able to live up to the judges' expectations. Hi, Jason. Hello, judges. You actually a photographer as well. You have a bit of an edge on this challenge, yeah? Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this challenge. So, Jason, at home, you're used to taking your time and taking as many angles as possible. Today, you're in a challenge. There's a time crunch. Are you going to be able to do it within the allocated time? I think what I'm making and how I'm going to take the photos is more than enough time to get the shots. OK, we look forward to seeing what you create. Maybe going for cupcakes is an easy route compared to Nikki's massive cake that she made. But at the end of the day, it's all about the photo. And the photo I have in mind is going to look really good. Duke, sir, I see your cake is not in the oven yet and you've had quite a lot of time go by. 
true are I need to cook my beetroot that I'm incorporating inside the sponge. For my cake, I've got my beetroot puree, which is mixed with my wet ingredients. So this side, I've got my dry ingredients, which has my flour, my cocoa, and my royal baking powder. I'll incorporate it together, and we'll get baking. Last time, you had issues with timing. This is an elimination challenge, for I know. sure. Yes, yes. The pressure's on. It is. We're all good. And time is with me. I made the red velvet, which is already in the oven. And now I'm mixing for the white velvet, which has a lemon flavor. And as if things are not going bad enough already, I make another mistake. <sighs> I shouldn't have put cocoa. I put the cocoa by mistake, and I'm like, oh no, this can't be happening. Kenzani, what's wrong with you? Kyle, your sublet is out of the fridge. What's the plan? I'm going to roll this, lay it into the case, and then I'm going to spoon this berry compote onto the bottom mm -hmm. and then bake it so this can almost jamify at the bottom. Do you well. feel like you have an Instagram style that you're going to kind of bring to this challenge and uh, yeah, you know, I think really so. shine? I like old school classic desserts. So if you look at my Instagram page, I do a lot of like replications of old school stuff, old school bakes. Classic, so. but Instagramable. Yeah. Now that my pastry case is in the oven getting nice and golden brown, it's onto the almond mixture. And I see, Carl, you're sticking to what I know you for now. That's the booze. So I've actually added a bit of the almond liqueur into my pastry. Oh. It's funny how the judges always seem to find more alcohol on my table, but it really, at the end of the day, just enunciates the flavor and really adds depth of bake. Deelnemers, officieel twee ure oor. Ons is twee ure in, twee ure oor. Tazia, you're moving very quickly suddenly. Why the decision to only start your cake now? It could have been cooling this whole time. So the halwa is something that really needs to be done first because it has to cool off properly. The mousse also has to be done properly. So for me, the cake and then the glaze was my last two steps. Well, let's hope you made the right decisions. <laughs> I need to speed up the cooling process of the halwa. I can't put it in the fridge, so I'm just going to put it on a bowl of ice and hopefully that will bring it a bit cooler and keep it at room temp after that. The sponge just came out of the oven. It's looking beautiful. Mm. My Oreo filling, I went for cream cheese and whipped cream. Just blended the Oreos, hoit them inside. Oh, guys. The flavor is so beautiful. Because this challenge is not just about the photo, I've made the pastry cream in the Thermomix to go inside of the cupcakes. It's looking really good. Time to put it in the fridge. I really love poached pears. It's a real classic French flavor. And what I'm doing is I'm glazing and reducing them with some orange juice, some French vanilla, some lavender, and some caster sugar. You only have one hour to go. One hour to go, pictures to take, finish those bakes. I don't know if you're experiencing the same as what I'm experiencing, but whereas I felt that it was very calm in here, I can feel a serious sense of urgency right now. Totally. I think that they're finally realizing at this stage that four hours isn't as much time yeah. as they thought. Yeah, yeah. I see a lot of panicked faces. I see cakes going in at this hour. What? And I don't think anyone has even thought about taking a photo. And this is an Instagrammable bake challenge. So the picture is also important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. they better move. Let's hope they come to the party. It's the elimination challenge, after all. I tried to make icing, which goes horribly wrong. It's too soft. I ice the cake, and the cake is just moving around. It's losing its shape, and I can't control the cake. And I'm thinking, I'm not doing this. Kansani, you have to finish. I, I can't. It's why? horrible. It's like. Why do you skew? think it's so horrible? Because it is. <laughs> because why? You should look at it. You're going to regret not finishing. But then it's going to look horrible. And that's even bad for me. I've got a reputation on the line here. I've got students I train. I've got people who trust my brand. If I make this cake and it looks horribly wrong, my reputation is gone. It's not as bad as you're making it in your mind. You've gone through all the stress. All the, the stress has been absorbed. All the things that I'm used to working with, they are not here. 100%. Very... This is called a challenge. I am not finishing this cake. So I'm pulling out of the competition. Next up, after a disastrous turn of events, will Kensani quit for real?
Kinsoni, Kinsoni, you're going to finish, you're going to present, you're going to take a picture and you're going to say, this was not my best day in the mm, pitch. But this I did it. What's happening? Oh, I'm not really sure what's going on, but it's not looking good. Kinson, you're almost there. Kalile finished better, Yes. What we started, we must finish. Absolutely. As bad as it might seem. Absolutely. But what matters the most is finishing, and we're going to finish strong. 30 minutes on the clock. I, uh, both you and I, <laughs> we can do it. You can, okay? you can. You and I can do it. I've seen your work. <laughs> this is not my standard. I totally get the feeling of wanting to give up, and when things are not working out the way you initially planned, I feel for her, but once you start, you've got to be able to finish. You can do it, you can do it. You can do it. Let's bring out the case. You can do Let's it, you can do it, case. you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. I'm in my lowest moment right now, and I hear the contestants cheering for me, and it's such an emotional moment, and I realize that I've got so many people believing in me and supporting me, and I'm like, you know what? If I can't do this for myself, let me just do it for them. Luazi, you're yes, about Fritz. to roll your switch roll. Oh, yes, Fritz. I'm about to roll. No, I don't want to be here, guys. <laughs> yeah. No pressure. Stressful. I'm nervous, though. Are you? <laughs> yeah, it's quite nerve-wracking. OK, well, don't mind us. We'll just watch. Oh, all right. Oh. <laughs> I'm rolling my Swiss roll. In my head, I'm just thinking of Zola, because she told me that at the edge, there should be not much feeling, so that when you roll it, there's that smear that comes out, and it's, it's just perfect. Thank you. <laughs> For my decoration, I'm thinking of chocolate dipped strawberries. I'm thinking chocolate ganache. We'll see how it comes out. This pastry cream is not setting. It's been in the fridge for ages. I think I didn't add enough corn flour. This challenge is going exactly like my previous challenge. I think I need to pull it back somehow. Time is running out, and at this point, I absolutely don't know what I'm doing. I'm all over my headless chicken in the kitchen. Everything is chaos. My station looks like a mess. Now that I've taken my tarts out the oven, I'm looking at the amber colors. It's really beautiful. Now all I need to do is glaze it with some apricot glaze to get that final sheen, and everything will come together. So now, I will be transferring my Swiss roll onto my plate. It's quite a tricky one. Loisy, it's looking good, but I noticed um, you didn't cut the ends off, but yeah. it's already on your presentation platter. Yes, but it could work to my advantage. I have something up my sleeves with it. Nothing I cannot fix. Oh, it's looking nice already. I put on my strawberries and I look around. Hmm. The first one. I'm a bit nervous because I finished way too early. Let's take a photo. Cake is coming together. I want to build that garden. I want to build almost a touch off of forest kind of feel to it, with the tree twigs almost concept, with the flowers blooming, of course, within the top part of it. What I would do is put it in the freezer, okay, and then when it comes out, clean all the crumbs off, and then grab some roses. We'll see if we can find some beautiful roses for you, and then you can just do a very simple arrangement, put some on the side there, just to offset it. Okay, it's going to be beautiful, don't worry. As I take my mousse out the freezer, it's not set. I have no idea what to do. I'm putting it in and out of the freezer the whole time. I have 20 minutes left at this point. So I put it in a piping bag and I'm going to try and ice the carrot cake with it. I don't really have a plan since I, I do not plan. I'm about to take photos of my Swiss roll, which is looking beautiful, using a Samsung S21, which I've never used before. But the camera quality is looking Quite sharp. Whew. So why is it looking good? Which one are you thinking is working best for you right now? Right now, it's, it has to be the top angle. Yeah, definitely. Even trying on the floor, so did you lose that like round uh, look okay. around it? Yeah, yeah, I think it could really work nicely. Just give me an idea. This is chaos, but I'm done and I'm ready to take my photo. This cake, I'm thinking the drip will make it a little bit sophisticated and the berries will make the cake to pop. 
so that when a person is scrolling through the Instagram, they will be able to stop and say, oh wow, that's a beautiful cake. Wow, I'm so impressed. With Kanzani, she pulled it back really well. Super proud of you. In terms of the photo, I was like, I was liking like the brown ambers and the yellows of the food. I thought that could be quite cool. They are like a wintry dish. I want to focus on the feel and the richness and the colors of this bake, but I'm finding it's going to be really difficult in order to capture that moment and capture that image because it's studio, it's busy, there's lighting, it's hectic, but I'm confident I'll get it right. I'm looking around at the other contestants' bakes and some of them made really simple things, like Jason made cupcakes, which I feel is very simple, but the way he piped everything on and the way he assembled the cupcake together, I feel like he has an advantage at that point. I see your photography skills coming into play here. What's yeah. the vision? My vision is a, a sunset. Mm -hmm. So we've got the red, pink, we've got the bit of purple and orange. Are you going to apply any filters? Or are you going to leave it natural? Uh, I'm going to check the photo later and then I'll see if it needs any filters. But right now it looks pretty good. What the actual? My icing is sliding off the top, meaning that my cake didn't cool enough. I need to quickly do my pie paint, put it in the freezer and let her cool and set in there. I want to incorporate a lot of my elements in this photo. So even though there's a lot going on in my plate, I also want a lot going on around the plate as well. I think it's really important for photography to have options. It's so beautiful. Struggling to find the right angle. Okay. I don't like the side of the cake. I think it, this is because my sponge was still a little bit warm. So my icing ended up dripping more than it should have been. So it's not looking really pretty. Might as well try and scale from the top. I managed to finish. This is not exactly what I had in mind, but at least I have something to take a picture of. I feel relieved. Zola said earlier that I would hate myself if I don't finish this challenge, and I realized that she was right. With my photo, I'm thinking it's got berries as deco. Do be nice to have berries around the surface while I'm taking the picture of my cake, so that it will look a little bit more professional. Kinsani, you done? I'm done. <laughs> and just in time, in three, two, one, your time would be over. Yes. Well done. Thank you. And there that's you a go. lesson for everybody. Yeah. Well done, everybody. Yeah. You all made it to the finish line. <laughs> right, and now it's judgment time. Next up, it's time for the judges to view and taste the creations. Who will influence the nation with their creative bakes? Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. I'm feeling nervous. At least the judges are hungry, so maybe they'll actually like it a bit more. But let's see. Beautiful. Mm. So today I made a gajar halwa crumble, which I baked a little bit extra than the gajar halwa on the side. This is something that I grew up eating. It's something in an Indian culture. And I've made a carrot cake and a chocolate mousse cream mm -hmm. <laughs> on top. So mousse seems to be your nemesis. <laughs> you know, I decided to just give it one more shot, but at this point I'm like, you know what? Let it be. Okay. <laughs> right, let's see what it looks like in image form. Right. Oh wow. I love how the orange that we were focusing on when you were taking the photo pops really beautifully. I think you've done an amazing job. I think the orange colours are really wonderful. I'm just wondering if the slate was the right um, choice of platter for you. Um, I think that it's just the only dark element. Right, time to taste, I think. I'm quite confident in the taste of my dish, I really know that it's going to taste amazing. Shazia, I can see why you spend so much time on that halwa. It is the star of the show. Really lovely. Oh, I hate to say it, but your mousse... Oh, man. Yeah, your, your mousse won <coughs> beat you. 
I find the whole world a very interesting choice because for you, it, there's a lot of history and a lot of content there, and I can imagine you feel very good making the dish. It's seriously unpretentious, which is a very interesting choice to make for an Instagrammable dish. So I think this specific item delivers more flavor and satisfaction than what it visually would tell you it does. So for me, interesting choice, maybe not the right one today, but delicious nonetheless. My turn, I'm loving what I did, and I've also given my social a special name. So hopefully the judges will love it too. Judges? Loazi, hello. Mm -hmm. Judges, meet Sola Nene. <laughs> <laughs> she looks delicious. Thank you. <laughs> this is a coffee chocolate Swiss roll filled with a Oreo cream cheese feeling. Before we taste, let's see how Instagrammable it is. Oh. Mm. You went with the top shots. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Putting it on that blue backdrop just made it pop even more. Stunning. The colors are vibrant. Well, I feel like that's what we asked for. We wanted the image to pop. Mm -hmm. We wanted the image to grab our attention. I think this does just that. Fun. Now to taste. Mm -hmm. Judges, I don't know about you, but I find this absolutely delicious. It's stunningly light. It's really beautifully balanced. The top glaze just brings everything together really well. So, good job. Mm. Lazi, I proudly hold and share the name <laughs> of this creation very happily. Just delicious. I loved what I've made. Taste was good. Picture was great. So, I think I'm actually safe. Jason, what is in your cupcake? Today it was an Instagrammable bake, so I took some inspiration from the Cape Town sunsets. So I try to incorporate that colour into today's cupcakes. I like the backstory of the theme. I think it plays well into the theme of today. So um, let's see the picture. Wow. Oh, you got some beautiful depth of field there. I love how you embrace the countertop. It's a beautiful image. I mean, it's a Absolutely great thing. Absolutely yeah. stunning. The styling is so on point. The textures you were playing with, the colors, the cupcake is the hero mm -hmm. and beautiful. Jason's cupcakes are normal to me, nothing extravagant there, but the picture made it look so beautiful. Let's see if it's as beautiful when we taste it. Yes. I love that there was that surprise of that custard in the middle. I just wish there was a little bit more. I took one bite and it was all gone. But you have redeemed yourself when it comes to the sponge. The crumb of the sponge is perfect. I love the strawberries at the bottom. For me, that was the special treat. However, in terms of the buttercream, very buttery. Yeah, I, I agree. The buttercream was a little bit buttery, um, but your cake is beautifully light and fluffy and also the balance with the fruity flavors. It's a really nice tart pop that comes through. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. The judges loved my cupcake. I nailed this one. The judges must be very proud of me right now because they're the ones who helped me to get to this point. But I really think I'm still going home. I'm so happy that we have a cake. Yes. You've been through the wars, <laughs> but we're really, really excited to see how you pull through. Thank you. And are you okay? I'm better. I'm okay. I don't like what I did <laughs> at all. This is not my standard, but I'm glad I could present something to you guys. So, Kinsoni, at the end of the day, what did you make for us? Uh, it's two sponges, actually. It's a red velvet and a lemon cake. Cream cheese icing and drizzled with uh, dark chocolate ganache with, it, with a little bit of um, fruits, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Right, let's see how you made it Instagrammable. <laughs> You've got a beautifully Instagrammable bake there. If somebody saw this on Instagram without any context, they would go, wow, what a beautiful cake. I can't wait to cut into it. So let that be a lesson. Always finish, cross the finish line, because look what you can produce when you do. Mm, no 
No, well done. Proud of you. Looks beautifully baked. Mm -hmm. you it looks beautifully. Yeah. It looks everything. I'm really amazed at how moist and beautiful this cake is looking. And I'm like, okay, girlfriend. Wow, this is beautiful. That is a moist sponge, very zesty. The lemon, I think, is delicious. Lifts the cake. I think it's very tasty. I honestly would be able to eat an entire slice of this cake. It is so beautifully balanced. It's really nice and moist. It's not overly sweet. Really hit the nail on the head. They've said it all, Kinsani. Both sponges are super moist, really tasty. You should really be proud of yourself. I'm so glad you didn't give up on yourself. This is delicious. Mm. Thank you, Kinsani. Thank, Thank you. you. Well done. It really taught me a great lesson. I'm not a person who normally gives up, but sometimes there are challenges that I give up on. And this is teaching me that in life you don't give up. Nothing is over until it's over. I'm really proud of what I've done. I think I've pulled it off. Everything's done. I'm confident. Judges. Hello. Oh. So what I did was I did an old school French pear and frangipani almond tartlet, bit of a rustic style with a white chocolate and lavender anglaise to pour over, and then a bit of blueberry compote on the side and a vanilla cream. Right, let's see the image. Let's see it. Mm. Mm. Stunning. Well, I love your framing and selection of styling elements. For me, some of the edges translate as burnt. I know that you did want it to be, you know, a burnt edge tart, but in an image, sometimes, you know, without hearing you describe what it's supposed to be, it kind of doesn't translate as well as possible. What I really love about this image is you were referring to like farm style, old school, yeah. French. I mean, I feel like you've captured it in the image. It tells that story to me. So I, I think it's great. Right, well well, let's cut into it. It's no soggy bottom, we can hear that. Mm, very, very nice. <laughs> Kyle, I actually got lost in this when I was eating it. I wanted more custard, I wanted to put more in my mouth. It's really delicious. Those pears are perfectly poached, so flavorful, also not too sweet. The only gripe I have is that your sable, just a tad too thick. If, if that was managed slightly better, this would be 10 out of 10. This dish did more than I expected in the palate. Flavors were beautiful. It was an absolute adventure to taste this dish. Thank you, Carl. Yeah, Carl. Thank you. Thank well you done. very much. I'm really happy with the judge's response. The only thing which I regret is I should have made the base of my pastry about two millimeters thinner. I'm just worried about the messiness of of the non-cooling cake that has made my icing drip a little bit way more than it should have. This red creation is a take on uh, chocolate and beetroot. How do you feel it went today? It was a little bit crazy. My sponges weren't cooling down enough. I definitely think she's got a good side, <laughs> and that's top down. Um, you have a beautiful visual story going on on top there. Your image hopefully will kind of pull that through. Let's see. Ooh. Ooh. Stunning. That garden story that I was saying now, you really captured it. My only concern is that you didn't consider the kind of frame around your cake. So you're getting the clips of your setup in. Nikki doesn't like the incorporation of the background. I really don't know why. It's different and it makes sense and I love it. But Duke, I want to know, are all those um, flowers edible on your cake? Not entirely. So some of them are garnish. I didn't really check their plants, their green. A risky decision, because if you're giving something to people to eat, they need to be able to eat the entire cake. So had I not asked you and gone straight in, you could have killed me. Just on that, so would you say that it enhances the quality of the image or not? It definitely does. But remember, we did say not only does it have to be Instagrammable, but we are going to eat your bake. And let's do that. Let's eat it. Oh, now it's quite risky because I'm not sure if they are edible. And 
that obviously not being edible would then cause a problem. Did something burn? No. Not at all? Nothing. I pick up a, a, a burniness, a burning, even texture. It, it lacks a little bit of balance in the flavor for me, personally. The frosting is lovely and light. It's just sweet enough because of the earthiness of the sponge. You need like an additional sweetness just to balance it out for me. Um, the sponge is lovely. The texture that the beetroot gave it, really great. You did a good job. I just think a bit of refinement would have been great. If you move on to the top 10, you need to take care of your timing. Use that planning time very carefully and make sure that you get your sponges in the oven so that they can cool for long enough. I'm not quite sure why Fritz thinks the cake is burnt. The other judges clearly like it. Um, possibly it's a, just with different palettes. Next up, with a double elimination on the cards, who will be going home? With a grand prize worth 90,000 Rand, including Samsung home and kitchen appliances, a Thermomix TM6 to the value of 26,000 Rand, plus Le Creuset cookware and accessories to the value of 15,000 Rand, the stakes are high. Whose creation will tickle the judges' taste buds? Bake more memories with the Taste Master and Royal Baking Powder. Contestants, what a day it's been. We could sense a real urgency among you guys. It felt like you knew what was at stake here today with our first elimination challenge. And you dug deep and you stepped up to the plate. And we really felt like you put your best foot forward. And for that, I want to congratulate you. So please, give yourselves a round of applause. You deserve it. The cakes looked great. They were delicious. And the images were so impressive, guys. You can be so, so proud. The passion in this kitchen it was really amazing to see. I'm very grateful to have been here today with you. The Instagram challenge was very hard for us to judge and there were two clear standout images for us today. Jason and Loazi, well done. I expected Jason to be one of the favorites. When it comes to taste, I'm the master. Coming from Nikki, it really means a lot. I admire her work so much. Well, as you know, today was an elimination challenge and you were all competing for a spot in the top 10. So two of you do have to go home today. The first person who is going home is... Will those non-edibles put me out? Shazia, please step forward. Shazia, thank you so much for your wonderful baking. Uh, we really loved your halwa. It was really flavorful, really delicious. We love that you took you know, your family story and you put it on a plate for us. Unfortunately, the dark background didn't do you justice. Um, you fell short today, but please do not stop baking more memories. We look forward to seeing you do great things. Mm. Thank, thank you. you. Oh my goodness, I kind of anticipated this when my mousse flopped and I was looking at everyone else's dishes. It's sad, it's unfortunate, but you know, I really had a great experience. I'm sad she's going home. I love you, Shazia. The second person that will be leaving the taste master to be honest, I'm thinking I'm going home, but at least I'm going home with my pride intact because I managed to do something. Will be the Duke. Please step forward. Duke! Duke, really proud of you. Thank Your you. frosting was top. It was excellent. The cake was moist. The garnishing, the inedible plants on top is inexcusable. Having worked in industry, all I know is putting something on the cake as a garnish, it has to be edible. And unfortunately for today, just not good enough. But keep at it. Your attitude is intoxicating. It is fantastic to have you on the show. You're an absolute pleasure and such a great spirit for everybody. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jude. Thank you. Disappointed in myself. Disappointed with my picture. Maybe I should have played it a little bit more safer. I'm even more disappointed with the small tricks that I put on. It's a learning curve. To the rest of you, we will see you for your next bake in the top 10. Oh, I'm in the top 10. Oh, I'm so happy I was able to redeem myself. Woo, top 10, the standard is high. I just have to up my game and do my best. Being on Tastemaster SA has been such an amazing experience. I've learned so much. I've made amazing friends from all over South Africa. I'm going to take a lot of this experience and knowledge with me on my journey in the future. It was loads of fun. I enjoyed each and every minute. Best of luck to whoever gets to the top two. I'll be watching. Next Friday on the Tastemaster SA. After an intense double elimination, the top 10 are ready to face their next challenge. But there's a twist. Joining as guest judge is renowned chef and owner of one of the top culinary schools in the country, Jackie Cameron. Another feel-good production.